Holy shit, it's back. It's just, this is just a montage of every game I played about two years ago coming back, back to back, basically. Like Disco Elysium, Outer Wilds, Outer Worlds, now Deltarune. Uh, chapter two's finally out. It's been a, it's been a bit, a bit longer than I thought with the naming scheme of chapters, but here we are. Uh, and I also thought maybe just intuitively that it was going to be like three chapters. <laughs> Like a trilogy, maybe. Uh, apparently, they're planning seventy. Uh, wow, I almost said, I said, said seventy. Uh, apparently, they're planning seven chapters. So, um, looking forward to this uh, George R. R. Martin situation where we're all trying to keep our save files while we wait for the Song of Winter to come out or whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, oops, I just hit quit instead of. Well, I guess I thought I was quitting that menu. It's fine. We're fine. So I went and reviewed. Obviously, like, nobody likes listening to their own voice, and so on, so I didn't watch my own playthrough. But uh, I watched I watched other playthroughs of Chapter 1, again, to review where we are. And, uh, it's actually a surprisingly lean story. Like, there's kind of just, like, the experience along the way is part of the appeal. Uh, there's just... There's just the writing of the Undertale universe can be a lot of fun, and the characters, and just its particular tone, and all that. But as far as story... It was relatively straightforward, which is just that um, Susie and Chris fell in... Oh, spoilers, by the way. <laughs> that wasn't clear. Go watch or play Chapter 1 first. And also maybe Undertale if you haven't, because who knows what direction... I don't, we still don't know what this is going to do. <laughs> like, Deltarune is an anagram of Undertale, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And uh, it have remixes some of the characters in certain ways, and it's still not entirely clear how the canon works or how that's some of that's going to work. And as the series goes on, it might get weirder. So generally, generally, I'm just assuming that you know about Undertale and Delta Room Chapter 1. And that's just how this is going to go. And it's your own fault if you, for some reason, decided to start at Chapter 2 of the spin-off sequel thing. So you're like double wrong for both not knowing Undertale and not knowing the beginning of of, of, uh, of Deltarune. But I guess basically what happened is they were in school, and it's a weird school where it's a mix of humans and monsters and whatnot. Uh, it kind of feels vaguely like it could be an epilogue to Undertale's like happier ending in this sort of like symbiote, symbiote, not symbiotic, but like peaceful living together experience. Uh, and Susie is a prick. <laughs> and Chris is a non-verbal RPG protagonist and they're sent off to go find chalk or whatever and they go into the closet and it Lion the Witch and the Wardrobes them into a different world entirely where suddenly they are the light bringers or, or light siders or something and they've got a they're, they're special and everyone else here is from the dark side because they're monsters from the evil world uh, a bit like what happened in Undertale except the obvious distinction between human and non-human isn't there because there's monsters in the light world too, or whatever you want to call them, the non-human characters. Uh, they and like Susie is a prick and is basically set up to be the genocide run character while you are maybe behaving like the uh, well you you made you made up the Rousey who joins the party and they're basically the pacifist run character. And so you have this, this interesting party problem where the two characters that you're with represent the two different ways of playing Undertale. And you're like, how am I going to reconcile this? Like, because if you're like, if you're like many players of Undertale, you probably want to play Deltarune as a pacifist and not kill all the funny creatures that you're meeting along the way. But Susie is apparently going to do that. But then Susie meets up with the bad guys and it's like, this is way better. Screw this. I'm leaving all of you guys and joins up with the bad guys but then becomes friends with the bad guys, but like the bad guy's not that good at being a bad guy either. He's just kind of a dope. And so if you're just patient with them, you kind of just get friendly with all of them and all join the party together. And ultimately uh, the what happens is the bad guy realizes that you're gonna go fight King bad guy if you keep going. And he's like, no, I don't want my dad or my friends to die. So he puts you in jail. And then Susie has actual genuine character growth when, ha when she has to choose between uh, fighting her friend or not, and she doesn't want to, so she actually has the realization of like, okay, I'll be this damn pacifist person like the rest of the group, because once she saw the, the direction that was going in, she had to have reconciled the fact that fighting her way through everything was going to end up with her fighting 
her friend that was now just willing to sacrifice themselves just to stop her from dying and put and from pushing forward and was pr imprisoning her out of fear of what will happen if she's not imprisoned and so on. It was neat. It was a tight little story. Surprisingly, like looking back, I'm like, holy crap, that's a, that was a short game with an even shorter narrative. But it was it was nice, and I have no idea where we're going. But the end of the first game ended with us getting back into the overworld where everything's chill again and we're not fighting monsters and all that. And for some reason, when Chris went to bed, they fell out of bed, went all creepypasta, like Sonic.exe. Like, it was, like, it was really, it was really silly and absurd, but, uh, they... Uh, they pulled their heart out of their chest and threw it into a bird cage that's in the corner of the room and like laughed and like some people think maybe it's Chris rejecting the player's control over them or has some other uh, narrative aspect or I mean I'm, I'm assuming it's not just going to be edgelord for the sake of edgelord because it's how you ended the first chapter in a seven chapter story so they have to follow up on that but it was definitely a thing to have happen at the end of a, a pretty wholesome story. And now about three years later, it's time to actually see where this goes. Spooky. Did this come out in October on purpose? Wait, did it come out in October? Actually, don't know. Holy crap, does it say that I played for 556 hours? That may not be correct. <laughs> uh, that might have been, I mean, I'm on a different computer than when I first played this game, so I had to copy paste. I, I, I backed up my drive and I had to copy paste it into the folder, so there might be like some data that's wrong about how long they think I played. What? Chris? Chris, honey, are you awake? Wait. Is that a... A knife? No! Wait. Oh, it's a, like a nightmare. Oh my god, where are we starting with this? Chris, did you eat all of the pie? It is your knife in this empty tin, is it not? Oh, that, okay. It's not a dream, we just went in a very different direction. Oh, Chris. Am I going to have to lock the oven again? The oven has a lock? Well, hurry out of bed, it's time for school. They're screwing with us. This stuff always makes me wonder, like, they must be pre-planning this stuff, right? Like. That's a, I think that's a setup on the idea that the, uh, uh, they, they baked a pie and you were supposed to, like, not eat all the pie. And, like, that was, that was set up in the previous chapter and it's used as a false start for where the next, uh, for the follow-up of the weird, like, creepypasta ending of the previous game. Oh, the cage is open. It's a bird cage. When the door is closed, there's no escape. That's grim now, isn't it? It's stained. What is... What's up with that stain, Chris? What's your, uh... What's your deal? But yeah, hearing that they apparently have seven chapters planned, it definitely makes me wonder if they've already sketched out the entire through line of the whole thing? Like, how much are they just winging it? Because that's a scary commitment. I've been burned a lot of times by narratives lately. A cactus. There's not much to say about it. The door is locked. There's no time to read books, just generally. <laughs> Jeez. How to Draw Dragons is at the bottom of the drawer. The purple character on the cover is dressed immodestly. <laughs> is it a dragon? Is it an immodest dragon? Your brother will never return this book. You could return the book. Your brother is in college, if I remember correctly. Isn't, isn't Azriel in college? He's not coming back. It's what they call you. That's grim, considering the, uh, the previous cliffhanger. I wonder if it's the same thing it said originally.
There's some white fur stuck in the drain. Cookie cutters for gingerbread monsters and gingerbread humans. It's a trash can. Somehow its floral scent has increased. It's funny how you just like just slightly rephrase it. Like you you hear gingerbread man and you don't think about it that much, but you see hear gingerbread human and suddenly you're reanalyzing the entire word and what and and how just weird it sounds. Looks like there's a bunch of little figures of little dudes in the windows. There's some cinnamony batter caked on the stovetop. It's a landline phone, but you already have a cell phone. Kind of loser. It's the TV. Looks like it's plugged in, but it's dusty. It's Cheriel, the beloved living room chair. Toriel, that's her name. It's a book of hymns. So where are we going to go? Well, shall we go? Chris, there you are. Even Susie showed up before you. <laughs> well, Susie grow as a grew as a character. I was just already perfect. <laughs> hey, Chris. If I knew you're gonna be late, I would have showed up on time. All right, wouldn't that? That's a, that's a hell of a phrasing. It's spelling. Susie, b please don't kick your desk. I treat school proper, property like you treat people. Okay. Next time I'll aim for the vitals. That's not what I... In any case, good morning, class. We have a lot to go over today. First, we're starting the reading from page 142. Any... Uh, any volunteers? Um, I... I guess I could read that. Oh my god. Is that the guy from Regular Show? From... Oh, Morde Mordecai, right? Because there's the Morda twice? <laughs> that, that, that goddamn image. <laughs> Trouble yourself not, Noel. I will valiantly take this blow of humiliation. God, that's a face. Um, that's okay. I can... <laughs> Page 142. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Times are pretty good, times are pretty bad. Mediocre times, iffy times, so so times. Listening to this, your eyes begin to close automatically. Have a nice day, everyone. And please, remember your group projects. Oh, um, Chris? Are you okay? You were, uh, sleeping all class. Uh, don't worry, I'm not mad, because I'm the I'm the cool teacher, remember? Just uh, concerned. Usually only sleep through the start. Good luck and rest well tonight, okay? Oh no, you're so tired from ripping your heart out or whatever happened. No eyes visible. You are a weirdly off-putting protagonist. Which I guess fits, because it was... I mean, even when the eyes were visible, that was true. In the in uh, Undertale. Then you just start, you know... As the audience would say... Genociding everyone. What a word to choose. I, like, I... They went straight to genocide. <laughs> Looks like motivational quotes from various literature. Try your best, Astral Wolf. Even in your darkest hour. That one seems to be from a video game. What a loser. Who would play video games? Then admit to it. Chris? This whole partner thing. You didn't lose sleep over it, did you? Actually, my sleep quality increased. I, I mean... Hmm. I don't know what we lost sleep over. I mean, we got it. We had an arc. We, we're grown together now. Like, actually, my sleep quality increased. I don't know if that's true, though. Huh? Chris, that's, uh, good, I think? So maybe you were just staying up late talking to Azrael online again. Oh, wait, you can't do that, right? I, 
I hope the internet gets fixed soon. I don't want to revert into my primal form. <laughs> Jeez. The computer wallpaper is updated. The buff embracing heroes are now edited to be four inches apart. There's dialogue about proper distancing at school dance. You wonder if your mother had some influence on this change? Tutorial find... Uh, find out about their, their desktop background? How? Did, how even? The tutorial... Relatively lack... There's a relative lack of actual encounters with her in the first game. But when you see her characterization in this game, you're like, oh my god, she's like, she actually like would really be like overbearing and exhausting and like incredibly Christian. Like she's like this very Christian Karen-y sort of character. And you're like, oh no, she's going to be a huge pain at the, at the PTA meetings. Chris, get a good sleep tonight, okay? It's your cool friend. The one that has emotional problems, <laughs> like all cool kids. Well, look who it is, the school zombie. You were sleeping like a corpse old class. <laughs> What's the matter? Had trouble going Betty by last night? <laughs> Me too, Chris. Like I could sleep after yesterday. Just waiting for today felt like years. <laughs> okay, you're doing that on purpose. That's a... Look at that side eye, goofy face they're making on there. This is a this is a fourth wall break about how long it took for this game that takes place the next day to come out. Did all that stuff really happen? Lancer, Rousey, everyone there. Are they still? Look, you've been wondering the same thing, right? Come on already! Back into the closet. Or whatever it is. This isn't a metaphor for anything. Stop looking into it. All right, Chris, this is it. Moment of truth. Everything we've been waiting for is just behind this. If we uh, open this and there's nothing inside, well, uh, we still be. Oh, she didn't want to say friends. <laughs> Screw it. Let's just open it already. I'm just incredibly emotionally invested. Oh, don't let her in. She's so boring. Please don't bring in the reindeer. <laughs> the, uh, the epilogue kind of sets up the reindeer as vaguely being like, she seems to fit like the, uh, like, rep, the, that, that it's, there's such a, t like an archetype of like this, like one really boring girl with no perceivable flaws that seems to be like the character you should be interested in or whatever. And I'm like, please don't, please don't go there. <laughs> She's so boring in a, I mean, they'll probably, I mean, it's it's this universe. They'll probably make something interesting out of her, but she was so boring last game. Um, Susie? Yeah? <laughs> that face. Noel, hey. What the hell are you doing here? Um, sorry to bother you, but, um, I... Well, I just... Birdly and I were going to the library to do some research for our group projects, and if it's okay, uh, would you want to come too? Oh, Chris, you can come too, I mean. <laughs> oh, so you're here. Uh, I mean, we're like, uh, busy with, uh, Chris, help me out here. What do we say? Crime. You know, just committing crimes. Just gonna go do crimes and go to jail. Forever. It sucks. Uh oh, um, well, that sounds just... Have fun, you two. I'll, um, be at the library. Chris, if you could bring her by later, it would mean a lot to me. Um, actually, wait. Wait a second. Susie, I, um, I... I have something for you. Okay, see you, bye. Oh, she's frazzled. Are you guys gonna kiss or something? It's a lunchbox? Full of chalk. She had chalk the whole time? <laughs> it didn't give it to Alphys? What the hell, Chris? Here, you hold on to this. You got the chalk. 
an entire lunchbox full of chalk. That would have changed everything. Wait, Chris, what the hell was that? Why would Noelle ask me to, the, to do homework with her? Death wish much? Does she want to fail? Ding. Wait a second, wait a second. Chris, did you notice how nervous she was? And like, blushing and stuff. Chris, you don't think she, uh... She's onto her secret identities. You know, this dark world stuff. Damn, we gotta keep this under wraps, Chris. This is our thing, you know? I dinged preemptively. They're not in... They're not ding ready. They did not... They, she did not realize what is happening in any way. Anyway, enough waiting already, right? Let's go. I did not predict... Like, they're obviously set up as being, like, a vague love interest character just because of, like, tropes. <laughs> but I did not immediately- I should- I did not assume that it was gonna be Susie. Which, why not? Chris is barely a person. <laughs> Chris just is kinda here. Do -do 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 -do. Who am I? I don't have dialogue, and I barely make choices. Story just happens around and at me. Well, we're back. And Susie's back to being covered in belts and shit. And I'm in armor, and it just worked. It's just, you can just come in and out whenever you want. Hey Chris, uh, you really gonna walk everywhere so slowly? I know you're kinda the take it in, but you can run, you know. You remembered something about the B button. Oh my god, look at us go! I didn't remember that, TBH. Item shop, a hint shop, a sword shop, and an inn shop. Here we are. Chris, Susie, it's been ever so long. I was so not ready for them to take their hat, their, their cap off, their hood off, and turn out to be uh, another goat character in this universe, just because I I just, I didn't even register them as having an, a secret identity or whatever. I thought they were a spider. <laughs> I, I I just thought Ralsei was a spider with a wizard hat. That's why they're real fuzzy and black. Been ever so long. Yeah, yeah, it's been, what, a day? Oh, that is short, isn't it? It's just that I've never had friends before. I've never waited so long to see them again, either. Fine, guess we'll try not to let you die of loneliness. This is the story of like four characters that have never had a friend before accidentally becoming friends. While Susie does all the talking. I bet Lancer wants to see us too, right? Hey, wait a sec. Where is Lancer? Where's everybody? Was there a lot of people here last time? It's just one screen, Susie. Worry not, Susie. You'll see them in a moment. Just wait here, all right? Uh, okay. It better not be some kind of prank or something. Chris, I have something to ask you. I need you to return the, to the light world and go to the old classroom to the east of the cl closet doors. Inside, gather everything on the ground and bring it back here, could you? What is about to happen? So, Ralsei, you're not gonna put your hat back on? Why? Did I look cuter before? Uh, no, I just mean... Uh, you, you think I look cuter now? It was just a nicer seeing less... It was just nicer seeing less of you. You're making me blush. Chris, go to the old classroom and bring everything back here. It's where you returned to the light world last time. Head east after you exit the dark world. Why do I? Why do they look like Harry Potter to me? Oh, it's because there's glasses, but then there's also like the uh, yeah the, the tuft of hair is has a pink shadow. So I keep I keep when I'm not looking directly at it, I keep registering it as a lightning bolt. How do you know which way to go after I leave the dark world? That's weird. So we're gonna come and go now, huh? Oh my god. You gather all the junk off the floor. Oh, thank goodness. Is it just on my head? And turn it into a giant dusty ball. I... 
Is this my friends? Are they a ball? Managed to cram everything into the closet, even the rug. Can I click on the door? Nope. What have I done? Hey, Chris, so where is every one? Whoa, this is different. Guess who's back, clowns? Lancer! Hey, Chris, don't know what you did, but hell yeah! Everyone's here. What does that mean? But, uh, what happened to Lancer's castle? Wait, what does this mean? Wait, are they all like toys? Like, they're are they all imaginary? Are we throwing out the isekai and just admitting that this is just all, like, just kids playing with toys and making imaginary friends? It's gonna be a real bummer when Susie realizes that most of her friends are fake. Oh, gone. Gone. Right, uh, when Chris sealed the fountain, that dark world disappeared and turned back into a normal classroom. So where's Lancer gonna live now? Don't worry, Susie. We'll conquer Ralsei's castle on our, as our own. Chris, are you bringing... As you bring Dark World denizens back here, the power of our fountain will transform this town more and more. From now on, the enemies we spare will be re recruited to our town. So let's keep sparing enemies, okay? That's a different... That's a difference right there. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully you won't accidentally spare the one enemy that, you know, systematically murders all of our townspeople every time we kill a boss. You know, from no particular game. Anyhow, why don't we all have a look around? We can head north toward the castle. I have a special surprise to show you there. Ha <laughs> if I surprise myself first. The last one there's a fresh and fragrant egg. Why'd you say it like that? Why'd you say it like Why did you say it like that? <laughs> Come on, Chris, you gonna let him beat us? We're gonna look around town. Oh, it's it's rules card. Confusingly spelled rules card. Ah, thou hast transplanted us to, to thine castle town. And tr truly a magnificent town of castles at art. But ho, oh, something art lacketh it feeleth. Couldst thou perhaps bring it an evil ruler or something? It's not the same when you're not getting ruled by evil daddy. Lancer hath pronounced me vice father. Oh, that's weird. Both hands I do all the cooking and cleaning. Perhaps that I shouldn't seek it the new employer. Your vice father? Jeez. You get to be deputy daddy. <laughs> this place didn't exist like this before, right? I don't think it did. I think the previous screen where it was just the houses that looked like arrows. I think that was the previous town. I think this is all new. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Welcome, travelers. So we are here now, in a new world. And right off the heels of defeating the clown. Incredible. Oh, what's that? It seems like he gave something to you. That's right. You must not have noticed it. That crystal, it's nearly invisible, but you've been holding it this whole time. Here, I'll take it off your hands and appraise it. Incredible. To think he had a shadow crystal. Shadow crystal, so-called because you can only see their shadow. Call it a premonition, but I get a feeling you may find more of these. If you continue to defeat strong ad adversaries like him, that is. If you can gather more shadow crystals, bring them here. I'm sure I can stitch together something incredible for you. Who's him? Who's the strong enemy? Are we talking about, um... 
about Lancer's dad, or are we talking about the Jester that had a name I don't remember right now? Jevil? Jevil. Which one is it? <laughs> you can, if you can defeat more strong enemies, you can find more shadow crystals. Try your best. It may be tough, but I'm sure it will be worth it. I have $727, which is a lot compared to everything that you, they sell here, apparently. Ooh, a stronger weapon for my character that doesn't attack. <laughs> wow. That's what I don't have to get used to again, is how to actually play the game. I have, I have refreshed around the story, but not on the turn-based combat. And the puzzle nature of how to save people. I'm just a block. I don't get it. Did Bagui go somewhere? I don't get it. <laughs> Thanks to you, Commander, we've been liberated. I hereby declare today National Ham Sandwich Day of Independence. That's a long, that's a lot of words. You've, been, you've gone str str strong in a direction. This guy always seems like he's enjoying life more than me. Maybe it's because he's a higher level. Jeez. That's just a little too real to be like, oh, this guy just seems to be happier than me all the time. What's wrong with me? Oh no. The, um, so last time was really heavy on card puns, if I remember correctly. And, like The puzzles were about the suits of cards and everyone was themed after parts of decks and whatnot. And this person's called Rules Card because when you buy a 52 card deck, there's a 53rd card that's the Rules Card. This room has a lot going on in it. Just a lot. Wow, our house was a dojo? Makes me want to fight. Can't we go to sleep? It's a party every day. And I'm the oldest. We're the same age. I'm not sure how you differentiate that. There's, I feel like there's an aesthetic change between Undertale and Delta Room that's not immediately apparent necessarily, but like... I feel like there was a certain cohesiveness to Undertale that was really consistent. Like they, they like it's like they limited themselves to really specific ideas, whereas Deltarune is all over the place with how it presents itself visually. Like you have rooms like this that almost look like uh, somebody's cork board of just like random things thrown together that don't quite look like they're from the same art style or the same universe, just kind of happening at you. And then of course like there's those like those like scrolling banners and so on. It's like it's a very different feel. It's a bed for three people, or one with, or one three-headed person. Do the heads all spread out? That seems like a pain. At 90 degree angles. Hey boss, boss. Heh. <laughs> I'm so glad we have a nice boss. I could shed a tear. But I won't. I'm on the job. I'll cry at home with the kids. <laughs> boss, you're strong, but you always have time to learn. Next step after tutorials is training. So me and the boys got you together at Dojo, complete our battle challenges, and get some fabulous prizes. Meanwhile, you might you might get a little bit tougher. We're gonna make you the strongest, boss. Okay. Jigsaw Joe. Learn how to spare like a champ. Get 100% TP without getting a hit. It's not Clover's birthday anymore. She won't go easy on you now. So I can get Joe's life savings, which I'm sure is like a dollar, then a hundred dollars, then a club sandwich. What a risk-free situation to learn how to play the game again and then here we go. Boss. You can act and spare on the same turn. If you know Chris's act will give an enemy 100% mercy, spare them on the same turn with Susie or Rousey. Jigsaw Joe jigs in. Act. Jigsaw Joe. Shave. That's just, that's terrifying. <laughs> don't, sh don't shave somebody. Just as a verb. Uh, the verb shave should really be directed at yourself only. Let's see. So you guys can you can fight and you can magic. Get rude damage and rude buster. Yeah, Suji just does know how to act, huh? You shaved Jigsaw Joe's stubble. Look at me go. Oh my god, look at those cheekbones. 
Susie spared Jigsaw Joe. Oh, boss, you're sparing me. Wait a second, I got something else to remind you of. Boss, it works the same with making an enemy tired. If an act will make an enemy tired, use Rousey's Pacify right away. Of course, Pacify is magic, so you need TP. Spend a turn defending to gain TP if you have to, boss. J uh, Jigsaw Joe looks like he could use bedtime a bedtime story. Um, defend, defend, magic. 16%, that's easy. Rousey cast Pacify, but the enemy wasn't tired. Oh, but it said bedtime st what? Boss, you're putting me to sleep? I mean, you you aren't. Make me tired and pacify me, boss. Oh, that would need to, I have to do the, jet, the bedtime story first. Oh, Susie will do the sleepy story. Okay. Jigsaw Joe looks like he could use a bedtime story, so that, that'll happen. And I, I did two defenses, and I got pacify, so we're still good. Susie told the enemy a bedtime story about beating them up. The enemy became tired and afraid. We also cast pacify. You did it, boss. If you can manage to spare enemies right away, battles will go a lot faster because they're over. Mind blowing. That's all. <laughs> An amazing battle. As promised, here is your reward. You received Joe's life savings. One dollar. Wow. Who could have predicted this joke? <laughs>